was at the end of a marriage, and so it was somebody was selling off part of you know, the house, the, breaking up the household goods. And something about the vibe of the place, and so there's nothing autobiographical, and no real person does this about, but something about the vibe of the place gave me a weird feeling. And I thought, what if what you're selling off is something you don't want the world to see? What about something secret about your life together, or your sexual life? Or I just start. And then I thought about the world of the internet and of video cameras and so forth. So that was how this story took shape. And I was really excited because Kaylee is a wonderful editor. She asked me a few questions. And I ended up adding 10 pages of backstory that I wouldn't have thought to add because she just did that tweaking. I think the best editors are the people who are like, you're an oyster and they put a piece of sand in and the pearl goes to build. I don't know if I got a pearl, but at least I know it was building. It was growing thanks to Kaylee, so I'm very dead. But don't stop. Watch all the way through, and I suspect you'll know who did it. This is my confession, and it is. <clears throat> the most hostile thing Casey did after the breakup was sell off the contents of our house on the beach, the place we bought and furnished our first summer together in Sag Harbor. I chose each chair and lamp, each dish and towel, anticipating our life together. I left him on the first day of April, April Fool. He retaliated by putting an ad in the star for the Saturday after Memorial Day. Contents of house, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., no early birds, please. My best friend Sally had the nerve to go. <laughs> by 9.30, there were 100 people lined up outside the front door, Sally reported, as we ate dinner together the following Friday night at the crowded sushi place in Sag Harbor. <laughs> by 11 a.m., the house was empty.